Hello guys, welcome back to Ray's Gaming and Tech Productions, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a big update for playing Steam VR games using just your phone. Yes! Yes! Now, after making the first video, I noticed that a lot of people had problems or didn't know what settings to use. So today I'll be showing you guys my best settings and walking you guys through everything in the IVRY app. Now before we get started, I want to give a quick summary of my first video and tell you guys how to download and play Steam VR using your phone. If you want the full tutorial, it will be in the description or at the corner of the screen right now. So the first thing you need to make sure of is that first you at least meet the requirements to play whatever game you choose. In my opinion, I would say that a NVIDIA GT1030 or better would work just fine as long as your CPU works well with your GPU. But one big tip is to never follow the system requirements that the game developers provide in Steam because most VR game developers don't try and instead put the minimum requirements that Steam says you should have instead of actually testing their game. So unless a game looks like it will demand a lot from your PC, I would personally say that you should try the game before you listen to the minimum requirements. After you meet the requirements, first you want to download the IVRY driver for Steam VR and download the IVRY app on your device. Now the premium version for IVRY is $10 which will remove the saturation decrease that happens after 15 minutes, but if you don't want to pay the small fee of $10, there is a second app named Arian VR that doesn't have a time limit, but there is a drastic decrease in quality and there is no way to modify the settings to fix the quality so I guess you have to pick. But once you have IVRY set up on both your PC and phone, and now you want to press the I button on the top of your screen, well, it'll be in the corner, and look for your IP address. You will most likely need to input that IP address into the IVRY pop-up. It'll be like a little tutorial that will only pop up if SteamVR doesn't automatically connect to your phone. And once you connect to your phone, then yeah, boom, everything is set up. Now you can go ahead and play your games. Now we can go ahead and talk about the best settings for IVRY. Now first you need to go to the settings and you will see connectivity. This section is only for people that will be using wired connection between their phone and PC, which in my opinion, unless your Wi-Fi is amazing, I would personally use a wired connection because of the little amounts of latency and stutter. Now USB tethering settings will allow you to send your IVRY data through your power cord straight into your PC, making the process a lot faster and if you are using a wired connection just enable USB tethering in the settings. Next is the performance section. This section is the most important section because it controls your quality. Now as you can see by the settings on screen, the frame encoder is set to H.264 which encodes the data being sent back and forth between your PC and phone. JPEG would work too, but I have found H.264 to run a lot better. Now we have resolution. I would suggest that you just test at the max first and then slowly work your way down until you find the sweet spot. And do the same exact thing with the max quality slider. Now if you're using JPEG, I would suggest that you disable auto adjust quality and auto adjust resolution because from my personal experience, it has caused screen blurriness and a decrease in quality because of it constantly attempting to adjust the resolution and quality. Now last but not least we have tracking rate and frame rate. These two can honestly stay at their default. I haven't found much of a problem with these settings myself but you can change them if you need to. Next is the headset section. This section is simply for customizing your own settings for your headset. First is renderer. This is simply the renderer that the IVRY app uses to render your game and to render each frame when you move your head. I personally use OpenGL because I haven't had any problems with it so far. Then we have lens distortion, interpurpillary distance, and alignment markers. Lens distortion is a filter that changes the way you see your game. Interpurpillary distance is simply for the distance between your eyes and alignment markers just show you lines that show the middle of your screen. Last but not least, we have the tracking and Steam VR section. I would suggest that you disable everything in the tracking section simply because I've had no problems so far. And in the Steam VR section, set your driver mode to direct. Now that's not it. I do want to talk about a few settings in the actual Steam VR app. Now there are only two things in the Steam VR settings that I want to go over, and that is resolution per eye and motion smoothing. 
First, we need to talk about resolution per eye. This is a setting that can either make your experience awesome or horrible. The resolution per eye slider tunes your game's resolution, making the game's quality sharper or less sharper depending on what percentage you pick. I would personally say to keep it at 100% for the best performance or lower. But if you have an amazing PC, then maybe 130 or 140% would be good. Just don't go over the top. Now we have motion smoothing. This is a pretty straightforward setting that smooths out your tracking and movement in games to avoid stutter from moving your head too fast. Guys, that is about it for this video. If you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them down in the comments and I will answer any questions. If you guys found this video helpful, all I ask is if you guys could like this video so I can know if I should make more videos on the VR topic. With all that being said, I thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video and that's it. I will see you guys in the next video.